Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another Wednesday night episode of Hollywood Interviews. And tonight we have Mr. James Earl. He's hey, a going? visual artist. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How's it going? Good. Uh, he's a visual artist, fashion designer, mathematician, former seventh grade teacher, and uh, he's here to wow us tonight with his art. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm happy to, um, ready to get into it. All right, so why don't you introduce yourself for us? Uh, yes, and my um, name is James Earl. I'm originally from El Paso, Texas. You know, parents are in the military. So he moved around quite a bit before settling in El Paso and then well, graduated in 05 and then went to Prairie View A&M University, got my math degree, nope. started, started teaching for a few years. And then shortly after that, uh, left to start my art career. Okay. So um, I guess, how did you get into art? I was actually, I was honestly, I was always into it as a kid. I was always like drawing and illustrating, you know, anime uh, comics and things like that. But I'll say once I got to high school, I, I kind of fell off of it a little bit. Like, kind of just stopped doing it, focus more on sports. And then it honestly wasn't until I would say the end of 2013, I would say, is when I started getting back into it. I went with, to one of those paint parties with a, uh, with a friend. And then, you know, it was like, yeah, I used to be pretty good at this one day. <laughs> and, uh, painting with a twist? Yeah, yeah. Like one of them little joints right there. And then okay. just like, um, so I was still teaching and then, but just kind of like as a weekend thing, I picked it up as a hobby and started painting again. And then you have friends coming over like, oh, where'd you buy that at? Like, no, nah, I painted that. Like, well, you painted that? I was like, yeah. And then shortly after that, like, I was already like, leaning towards like leaving education it really wasn't seeing it just really wasn't my thing so um i got it i guess it was kind of like i guess it like a spirit of moment type of deal where it was like a missed me like a quick like rash decision but yeah so i left in 2014 and then just started doing art full time and everything you know uh did odd jobs here and there bounced around you know from job to job to like uber restaurants you know calls so you really didn't like teaching Nah, <laughs> it just, it just, it just wasn't for me, you know. Um, yeah, I enjoyed like all the relationships with the kids and like my coworkers. Of course, you know, it's exciting because I mean, every day is different. Like the eight hours goes by like this. Like you look up, it's lunchtime. You look up, the day's over. You know, every day is is different. The kids, you know, they really keep you going. But then it's like the the best thing about it is the kids. The the worst thing about it can sometimes be the kids. You know. And yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, very um, time, very, very, a lot of time. I think a lot of people don't see like the time that teachers actually put in to not just being there from when class starts to when class ends, but the planning and, and the calling the parents and, and getting home and having to grade papers. And, you know, some teachers don't leave till they get there at, depending if you're coaching, you're going to get there like five, six in the morning. You're not leaving to seven, eight at night, and God forbid you have a game. <laughs> you yeah. Know, you're not getting home you until nine, ten, you know, that, and that's just life, you know. Some people are, you know, built for it and dedicated to that, and, you know, that's, that's definitely should, teachers definitely should get paid more. <laughs> yeah. Definitely that's that's starting well. close to six figures for everything that they do, but, yeah, it's just, like I said, all in all, just all that, it wasn't for me. Yeah, I mean, and you have to, you know, go for, you know, whatever your dream is. So, I mean, you mentioned a second ago that your friends would come over and they would see that you had art and they're like, man, where, where'd you buy that at? I, I was looking the same thing uh, in my mind. I was like, you have a lot of your art behind you. And I was like, that looks, you know, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so actually, um, so let me see which one I'm pointing. So this one that I'm pointing at right now, that's uh, one of, that's the, my Opulence 5. The, the fifth one in that series. And then this one over here, this shoulder, you see that one right here. I currently have a, um, well, that's just a replica, but I currently have the original um, in an art gallery, Irving Art Center right now. And in Dallas? Yes, yes. Nice. Yeah, so I recently got that exhibition. And then again, right over my shoulder, again, I have a couple of my hats. This is from my line that I just started, inspired by my artwork as well. But a couple of hats and then actually then right above the hats 
it's actually some of my friends from high one of my uh friends from high school he was a uh, um like a grade ahead of me but we was on the track and field team together and he um actually started um like a little <laughs> animated series like a couple years ago and you know you like you support him you know on the um, cash app or whatnot and then he sent some prints in exchange so actually that's actually his stuff and it was crazy you know someone that i so similar to me that i came up in high school with that started ran track and field with and started doing something you know completely you know just out in left field and you know he did it he put it out there and that was great and then last one is last but not least is this uh biggie digital print that i have on the wall right here uh turn your camera a little bit see it's kind of there it is right there oh yeah that's nice right there yeah yeah and I got my setup open. Let's try not to move it on one in the fall. But yeah, so been doing that. And then just earlier this year, I made the jump to full time. So I'm full time now. So now I'm just looking to keep it going. You know, God forbid we don't shut down again. But you keep your fingers yeah. crossed. But so I guess it has been a challenge for you. Well, what was it? Has it been a challenge? Has it been a challenge for you? Oh, as far as what? What you? Um, um pandemic and things like that. yeah i mean yeah um just because it was just so sudden you know what i mean um i mean it was a challenge i'm sure it was a challenge for everybody you know i think the really the just the, the not knowing what was going to happen was like the toughest part and just you're kind of just sitting around waiting you know but then at the same time bills are still due um so honestly what it um towards the end of 2020 is like i feel like i kind of started figuring out i figured out what my niche was going to be what i was going to do just for everything that shut down so really the challenge was because my following like it's, it's okay you know i don't have like ten thousand followers or anything like that so i'm still yeah. um, not being able to get outside and do shows and do markets where i'm meeting hundreds of people a day you know um that was definitely a challenge um trying to uh I say trying to get my social media up and trying to get a grasp on the social media marketing, but then not at the same time not being able to go out and get the gist of what my market is. So the cha so the challenge was I'm you know pretty much shooting in the dark here because I don't I'm not I'm not able to get a a sense of my audience. So that was the marketing was definitely a challenge. Um, you know of course um you know I had to go you went to go on unemployment for a little bit. And then, you know, you have that and it came through. I can't, you know, I can't, so I can't be too mad. It did, you know, allowing me to pay bills, gave me all the time I needed to work and just create and everything like that. And then, like I said, things started to pick up towards towards the end of the year when I, um, when the job finally called me back and I applied for, you know, finally got started with that. And then just as we're um, opening, you know, everything's opening back up. I just knew I just like I had to be alive when <laughs> when we yeah. open back just be alive and be ready and you know we're not gonna we're not gonna stay down forever like I didn't see that happening. Yeah. So are you a full time artist now? Yes. I'm yeah, hundred percent full time. This is where that's amazing. All my money comes. So I, I mean, I'm sure that there, that you know, for all the aspiring artists out there that may be worried about taking the leap, um, I guess how do you get started as an artist in um, you know what kind of uh influence or not influence but like what can you do to um for anybody who's on the fence about or maybe worried about taking that step yeah i would say that i mean the first thing is very important that i learned over the uh, break was you really have to determine what your goals are so once you like like i said it's like getting in a car and, and with no destination you're just gonna drive all over the place. You need to like, no, I'm going to here, I'm going to Chipotle, or I'm going to this is where I'm going. True. So yeah, so once you're able to determine what your goals are, then from there you can determine what your niche is gonna be in the art world. So of course, like if you're trying to get in museums and galleries, there's certain things that you're gonna have to do in order to get in museums and galleries. And then if you wanna just strictly do direct to consumer, you wanna do the markets and pop-ups like what I do, then there's a certain certain process that you're going to have to have to go about doing that so i say once you determine your goals um then from there you got to find your find your niche in the art world and then from there is i would say just just being active i mean you're a creator so you're you're going to have to be creative you're going to have to get out there and and kind of see what's out there and then once you feel like you're at a point to where you can 
um, support yourself and, you know, pay your bills at the same time, put um, time and effort back and resources back into your business, then, you know, you, you should definitely take that leap. Um, I definitely, you know, like I said, that the problem with me, I rushed it the first time <laughs> the, when I just abruptly left teaching with no plan. And that was the thing. So you definitely really want to have a plan and pretty much just the general rule of thumb is you would want to be in making at least two times what you're making from a job. So if you're making a thousand bucks a week, you want to be making two thousand bucks a week selling art, and you want to have at least at least uh, six months to a year of rent saved up. So if some people, if you're looking for just that general rule of thumb, at at least you know make at least two times what you're making from your day job, and then have at least six months to a year of rent saved saved up, and then and then from there you just it's, it then from there, it's just a matter of discipline. You know, you have to to wake up every day and, and do it every day. You know, there's no one, there's no over your shoulder telling you got to do this or do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want, but that's why we do it anyway. But from there, it, it was, I would say it's just discipline at, at that point, just being consistent. So when you said that you have to make two times what you make for your day job, mm-hmm. um, I guess, would it be? De- do you think it'd be dependent upon your art, or is that coming to like when you're trying to determine if you're going to make money? Do you increase the price? You know, are you saying like now? Yes. Oh, I'm gonna just mm. sell for so each one for twice what I make. Yeah. Or are you well, gay? That's the, well, that's the thing. As far as like um, with your pricing, your the, the client base is always going to um determine your um, pricing. Again, goes back to saying setting like your setting your goals. So of course. If you're trying to sell stuff in the gallery for twenty thousand dollars, if you try to do a, a, a small pop up, you know, <laughs> you try to sell something for twenty thousand dollars, you know, good luck with that, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, but um, man, I'm sorry. Go. Well, what was you at at USX? What was it? Um, um, I guess how do you determine? Yes. Oh, okay. That? Yeah. So, like, and also the, just the demand. So as the demand is going up. You know what I mean? Like, for example, like my black hats, um, I should have bought more of those. They sold that. Those are the first one. I don't even have any more black hats. So not only when I get some more black hats, those ones are going to cost more. And for obvious reason, it's black. It goes with everything. So yeah, it would have been the same thing had they been buying out my blue hats. You know, that's would have been the one I might have had to mark up a little bit. So the demand is what's going to determine how you price your demand is what's going to determine how you price your art, the location and where you're placing it and then going back to what i was saying just finding your niche so for example like um i'm really big on direct to consumer like so that's people going to my website people um messaging me on ig and facebook saying hey i like this artwork how do i buy um and then doing the the uh, markups i mean the not the markups the small markets and pop-ups that i do i do any i do about three to six of those a week you know so i'm constantly 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 meeting people and then aside from and then which that allows me to take the time to submit for galleries. And that's when I have my much larger, more elaborate, more pricier work. Or mm-hmm. you can do, and there's some people that do murals, that that's what keeps them going. And that's what keeps the light on. And then if you're consistently getting them, then you know, you have some decisions to make. I know a guy at a um art market, he does like portraits. So you know where you sit there and then he draws mm-hmm. you, he does that. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's not really so much um, where you're pricing, where you're pricing each each like piece or your artwork is more so finding your niche and getting that to a consistent point where you're making enough. You know, so if you're selling prints, you, you you're selling prints with twenty bucks. You know, you just sell a lot of prints. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then like a, and then once you get to that, once you get to a point where you, you know you're making enough, say you're making enough doing your murals, and that's People that do custom work. I mean, there's all types of stuff that you can do from yeah, murals, really. like I said, custom work, markets and pop-ups, commission, commission works, fashion and clothes, and and all types of stuff. Once that gets consistent, that's when it's time to um, make decisions more so than just trying to charge an arm and a leg to pay for everything. Okay, and we got a uh, question from the audience that says, "What is your location, and how are prices on your art?" Where's my location? Well, I'm. What is your location? Well, I'm located in uh, Houston, Texas. Um, 
stay um i don't know if i want to give like my exact address but i mean I'm <laughs> West timer. like i don't have a studio if that's what she's actually i pretty much I, 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 mean, I think it's more so where can they go to see your art oh so if you're me if i'm wrong yeah okay well if you want to see my art you can always check me out on instagram that's um the social media platform that i you know spend most of my time on so from there i then i do have a link to my website on there as well and then also the thing that i do is i post my my market schedules so so every week you can you can see where i'm going to be at whether i'm going to be in montrose or going to be at state of mind or sunshine's vegan deli or axelrad you know i post all that on there so you can keep up and follow me um and see everything that's going on so the best place would be to check me out on instagram yeah, and that's scrolling down on the ticker below. Yeah, James wrote with the Y. A lot of people forget the Y. <laughs> I should have probably made that capital. <laughs> no, it's all good. They can see it though. It looks, it looks perfect. All right. So thank you for that. Um, and I guess you know this was a pretty interesting question, especially to myself. So do you create art for others' interests, or do you kind of just come from your artistic mind and you're like, man? a little bit of a little bit of both so but it's coming from my my mind first it's coming from my inspirations what i hold dear it's coming from that first and then from there i'll critique it a bit to kind of i guess make it relatable to relatable to other to everyone else and again and that just honestly goes back to determining what your goals are um so when you're doing art, yeah, there's there is a market for people that this may want something nice on the wall to match their decor. So nothing wrong with that, you know. So there's a market for that, and then there's a market for people that want something with more of a story behind it, more of a concept, more of an idea. So like my my opulence artwork, of course, it's more yeah, it's pretty, has a lot of colors in it. Cause like I said, that's coming from me. That's that's what inspires me. But then, like I said, also with the story behind it is what makes it relatable to everyone. So it can be something that can be in a gallery and it also can be something that to just go on your wall for your house. Or even like the biggie one that I showed you, you know, no, not really, no story, no idea or concept behind it. You know, it's just a, a it's just pretty much a nice image. So, yeah. so like I said, going back to what your goals are, if you're, if you're trying to be the next Basquiat, then yeah, you definitely want to focus more on well, like coming, working with from your inspirations and telling your story, putting your idea and concepts out there. And if you, and if you don't you care less about getting in museums and galleries, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I know plenty of artists that just sell stuff off of Instagram and off their website, you know, putting out, you know, images for the for the for that pretty much the average consumer that just wants something nice on the wall so like i said it yeah say, it all it it could sound like so like so i hope i'm not sounding like too vague or nothing but like that is like i said it really comes down to to what your goals are i'm doing that because you know, every 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 consumer's every every consumer is different and, you, and your art in particular is created from your inspire your, your own inspiration yeah. not necessarily you know a, a request i guess yeah trying to make it for someone yeah it's definitely coming from my own inspiration and that's and that's the and i guess if you want to argue i would say i would choose the latter you know choosing from your own inspirations you know what i mean because you can do the um, image, but then it's you're selling you it's a part of you you're telling mm -hmm. your story you know just like with any type of art whether you're a musician or an actor or an actress or whatnot like when they when you're assigned a project, yeah, they want you to do the project, but they also, they chose you because they want your inspiration on it, your touch yeah. on it. So I feel like when you do, when you create from, just from, for yourself, not us in terms of, but from yourself, from within, you know, uh, I feel like it's just a better that way because trying, at the end of the day, you're not gonna be able to please every single person, you know, at the end of the day. So I feel, I definitely feel like it's, like I create from within and I feel like that would be best to, um, that'd be the best approach. Yeah. So, you know, just, a, I guess a bit of a testament for me, I, you know, I was able to meet James at the all access art show at Finn hall in Houston. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
I saw his art and I thought it was extremely unique. It was something I had never seen before and on the level at least of what he had, you know, made. So you can see different, you know, and I'm gonna get into it later on, but you can see art that's similar but not on the scale of what he does. Mm -hmm. So you should definitely check him out at uh, James Earl on Instagram. And with that, I'll lead into, um, you know, what type of art do you do? Yeah, so right now, um, I'm mostly on, on the digital art right now. So like I see most of all the art that you see on the wall is all digital. That started last year at the beginning of the pandemic. But then I'm also known for my string art as well. So you um, pretty much on the so, English. Go ahead. I was gonna say, so with that, can you explain what is digital, um, geometric digital art? Yeah, so pretty much, um, well, again, I'm being that my background, again, like I said, coming from my inspiration, like being that I have a mathematical background, that's the approach that I take in my artwork. So pretty much with my uh, geometric digital art, I'll, you know, I'll find an image on the internet that I like. And then from there, um, the geometric aspect is, you know, constructing the, the image with just different shapes, you know, constructing it and destructing it. So then once I have all the shapes, in the right place and I got it how I like it. You know, from there it's just a matter of coloring it and then breaking it down. So it's a lot of building, like like I said, a lot of constructing and then deconstructing. Uh -huh. So from once I have the image, just a matter of getting the colors and the shades and the tone right, getting the angles right to get in the image how I want to do it. So that's the um geometrical aspect of it. And then digital art coming I mean, because I I use Illustrator, so I'm mainly off the computer. Which has um, been great. For me. Yes, mm -hmm. which has been great for me, even from a business standpoint, because now I can replicate stuff now. So I can make something one time. I can print it small. I can print it big. I can put on a hat, a T-shirt, a coffee mug, a cell phone cover, you know, what have you. And so that and that has been um, been working out for me. And going back to what you said, like that's just that's been my niche so far so like i said so once i got consistent with that that's when i knew it was time to take that leap because i knew like i said i was consistently um earning from that and then um so that's with my digital art and then i also have my string art as well i don't i don't I really don't have any on the wall right now or <laughs> none next to me right now but well you can check out some of my string art on my ig as well but um the string art is i'm almost the same process where I, I find an image that I like and then you know you, sometimes I construct it and you know deconstruct it to how I, how I see fit I'll sketch it out and then it's a little bit then from there it's a matter of placing the pins on the canvas and then from there just um then once I have all the uh, pins in place you can think of it like a connect the dots almost like with the pins and each pin is like a different coordinate paint coordinate point on like a on a on a canvas right and then that that has the image and then from there i'm just coloring with the thread so in between all the all the pins all over the canvas i'm just coloring with the thread filling in the gaps in between and then bringing bringing the image together so it's very it's very layered very three-dimensional and i'm sure. and i'm using all layers so like i said the string is on top of the string of course with the different pins and then also the canvas as well the plain white canvas or whatever color I choose to use on the background, all that all that permeates through it, and then you know gives that really like three D effect, like is like it's really coming at you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so that also sounds like it comes from a mathematical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Some you know somewhat, yeah. You got the coordinates, and then you know you got to figure out what the coordinates are going to be yeah, first. If you were yeah, well, if you when you look when you look at it, if you break it down, you know the the canvas would be your coordinate plane, and then each individual pin would be a coordinate point. So whether it's over twelve inches and up seventeen, or you know over five and up thirty, you know each pin has a specific coordinate point. And then from like so I said, from there it's just filling in, filling in with the thread in between the pins. I, I just, you know, both of the um, the geometrical digital art and the mixed media string art, those are really, um, I guess, unique niches. How did you get into the mixed media string art? Well, when I when I left uh, teaching, um, like my I was already painting, but like my painting was okay. 
I mean, through my eyes, I felt it was okay. Of course, you know, other people and me, I thought what they thought about it. But the way I was looking at it, I'm still like, even though I said, even though I know I didn't have a plan, I'm still like, you know, somewhat trying to think about this in a strategic manner. So I was like, okay, my pain's okay. So, but if I leave and trying to do this full time, like I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna be learn one, just learning how to paint <laughs> the proper way to, to shade and all these other techniques that I don't know about because I didn't go to art school aside with trying to make it a full career, you know what I mean? So I didn't see really that, that being the, the best, the best way of going about it. I wanted to come out with something that I could hit the ground running with, like something I was going to just stand out there and be different. Now, granted, I still have a long way to go, but I, I know I needed something to set me apart from the other painters out there. Because if, if I would have just, you know, stuck the painting, I more than likely wouldn't, um stand out and then considering at the time i really wasn't sure what my story was so now is he talking about now you don't have a story behind it you really just kind of just you're just in with everybody else and you know there's there's you're not going to stand out so pretty much a couple things that i did see i seen i was just looking at what i want to do i seen some table saw art it was a seth curry made of uh, table salt I seen a guy, he made artwork out of like cut up pieces of paper, like with an exacto blade knife. He just cut them up and he would make these animals out of them. Now you see the image you're looking at, you're like, oh my gosh, what is that made out of? And just the, aside from the image itself, but a lot of the entertainment was trying to figure out what it was. And like he, he was so detailed with, with the bird, he would do like the feathers and like the fur, like it would act like a polar bear and it would really <laughs> look like fur on cuts up pieces of paper and then i seen like bottle cap art and other things so i was like okay that's what i want to do i want to take like a random household object and make that my art so when you see the image you're of course you're impressed by the image and everything but then when you get up on it you're like oh wow that's made out of this or that's made out of that it's like a whole nother layer of entertainment to it so i started i did start off with the bottle caps um I had I did rubber bands and thumbtacks and push pins, and then I eventually settled on the pins and thread, and then from there that's when I kind of knew okay like this is what I'm going to do, and then from there it's just a matter of working at it, getting better, and things of that nature. Yeah, like I said, I mean I I was thoroughly impressed with what I saw at the art show, and uh, you know even just. The amount that you have too. So I guess you know how long how long you say you've been doing art now? Thing seems like forever, but like well, like seven to eight years. I don't say I said I started on 2013, it's 2021. Yeah, about seven to eight years. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Um, like I guess say just building up the inventory. That's that's something that takes time. You know, mm -hmm. um, and then also again from like just making the switch to digital art. Whereas with string art, every every anytime I want to make some make some money, I have to physically make something. You're talking about like you see how much stuff I had at the All Access Art Show. Now, if I'm just doing string art, I might have seven, eight, maybe ten pieces tops. But you know, you see where I can print stuff. I can just have an array of things. Even with my digital, I mean, even with my string art, and you know, clearly I'm more than likely not going to sell the string art there at that um, at that location. However. It's still something that sparks the conversation and gets people excited to stop by my booth. And like I said, um, cause the prints are just a way better, a much better price point point for that. So, so string art more expensive? You said what? Yeah, the string art is definitely more expensive, yes. Oh, okay. That, I was gonna like, say, it, it, it seems like, like it would be. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely more expensive, so like, at a small show, like you may see, like I'm gonna have nothing but prints. I'll have my hats and t-shirts. And then I might have like two, maybe thread tops, you know, string guard pieces there just to show. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the string guard's definitely more expensive. And then, um, so when it comes to like, if I'm doing like a gallery exhibition or like a, um, or something like that, or a show where I'm invited to or something that's in a gallery, then that's when i'll you know i'll bring the string art i'll, I'll even come with like the um some of the larger um canvas prints and things of that nature because again like i said just um learning learning where that niche is learning where that where that market is okay so i guess 
um, you know, with all of this and the transition and over the years of learning the different types of art that you do and perfecting your craft, what has been your biggest challenge? Ooh, biggest challenge, I would say. Or some of the biggest challenges. Yeah, I was, I was fine. Does it have to be art related? No, okay. whatever you want to share. Yeah, okay, so the biggest challenge was finding finding something, finding a day job that you like that's at the same time is going to give you time to create. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like, you know, I'm very introverted. I feel like a lot of artists are very introverted. So we're, e we're very easily mentally drained, you know? So finding something that's consistent, that still gives you time that you like was um, definitely a challenge. That's why I say, if you are listening and you do, if you are a creator or you do have a side hustle, you do hair, whatever, and you have a, a day job that, you know, it pays well, you like it, you're cool with the managers or your other employees, and it still gives you time to create, you might want to appreciate it like to the fullest, like you really might want to, you know, because they're they're definitely hard to come by. They're definitely hard to come by. So that was one of like the main challenges. Like I said, um, prior to the pandemic, I was working at a restaurant. I, I love that job, man. I really did. I was cool with everybody. Um, like I said, the most important, I had control of my control of my schedule. I can, you know, then still had time to to create and work and do shows and markets, and then from doing Uber to doing all this other stuff, you know, finding so finding a consistent day job is definitely a challenge. I would say the next thing for me, yeah, I'll right, say you know, marketing. even with you know the things that I'm I've been trying to do myself, you know, finding something that you actually enjoy that still gives you that freedom. Yes. To be able to to do the things that you're passionate about. So basically, you don't want to have the stress and the passion. Because yeah, the passion, yeah. you're over here, you know, doing all this work all day long, and you're doing it for free because you're passionate about it. But then you're also, you know, dealing with the stress side, and you're like, man, it drains you before you can even get to your passion. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And and that's the thing. I think I really feel like that's a very underestimated aspect of it. Um. Like I said, especially when you're introverted and just being mentally mentally drained, or even if you're not, just being comfortable, being in a being in a happy space. I don't I don't paint angry, or you know, yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna. It's not gonna. It's not gonna turn out that well. So yeah, you definitely want to be somewhere where you're happy. And then, and if you do have a um a nine to five, or you're still teaching, or you're engineer, or doctor, lawyer, whatever. And you love and you love your job, and but you still have something else on the side that you want to do. Hey, and by all means, because it's a lot. That's a lot easier to do when you actually, you, when you love your your job, and and you do it every day, and you do get that fulfillment. So, like I said, so I can understand. So it's a lot. So if that's you, then I'm not not talking to you right now. Could be you know, because it's a lot. It's just a lot easier to to do that once you know that you love your job. If, you know. Yeah. yeah, and if you know, but, but you know, and if you don't, if you know there's something that you else you want to get into, you still need to appreciate your day job. You know what I mean? But you still want to yeah. find. You still, it's still important to find that balance. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The next challenge I would say is marketing. Marketing is is um, definitely a challenge. You, you you'll see after a while, making the stuff is easy. Painting, doing a mural, doing the digital stuff that's easy. It's the marketing that's the challenge. The marketing <laughs> and marketing is definitely. Definitely a skill set. You see why people pay tens of millions of dollars for other people to um, do their marketing for them. It's definitely a skill set. Uh, with the with just even getting decent pictures, getting having the right lighting, knowing what to say in your post, knowing how to gain people's attention, knowing what your where is your audience? audience, where is your audience exactly, knowing all who that, is who is your audience, <laughs> all that, coming up with um, nice captions and storylines that's going to get people to stop when they're just doing this on IG and Facebook, you know, that is definitely a skill set. Definitely something that I'm getting better at. If you were, if you are going through my IG right now, you you can see the transition and from one, just the pictures getting better and then the captions and the stories and frequently posting and all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Um, but yeah, marketing is, is definitely a challenge. And then the last challenge I would say um, is knowing where to look, you know, um, I feel like a lot of times, like with um, creators, like we we know what we want to do, but a lot of times we just don't really know where to look. And then just going back to what I said, just trying to find the 
when you do have your day job, trying to find the beauty or the the positive side of it. One positive aspect was doing Uber, the Uber that I got to see all of Houston pretty much. So I'm driving around, I'm meeting people, I'm talking about my art. You know, I'm I'm getting to talk about my art. And marketing <laughs> without really even having to, you know, exactly. try. And and seeing just I'm driving by, oh, what's this over there? Okay, oh, that's the art gallery over there. Oh, I didn't know they do this market over there. You know, on side of towns that I normally probably wouldn't go in on my own. Mm-hmm. So, so like I said, just knowing knowing where where to look um, is def was definitely like a challenge. So that could be like knowing what Facebook groups to join or um, what what art galleries and how to how to volunteer or or just like just learning like certain people to to reach out to and just how to get out there because it's it's kind of hard when you like you kind of go into a cold and you don't have any relationships with anyone you don't have anyone that's done it before you that's yeah. you know, already plugged in in various spaces like that that would say I would say that that was like the main three challenges finding a consistent like day job marketing and just knowing where to look has been my challenge yeah. been the challenges the biggest ones. Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's been pretty much what the goal of uh, this group has been is to be able to help people, especially during the pandemic, get whatever it is, or even if it's just an idea or a dream, to get that out in front of people who are not going to judge and criticize. And you know, like I was talking to you in our in, in our call, um, you know, you never know who's who's looking, who's next door, you yeah, may yeah. have something that blows your mind away. Somebody, you know, your next door neighbor could walk into your, you know, to the room that you're in now and just be like, whoa, what is this? Just like yeah. you said, your friends, where did you buy this? They don't realize you're creating that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that, and so, that's the thing. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, especially about Houston. We're also very privileged to be in a great city, a city like this, where there is literally, I'm telling you, like there are literally, if you, know, again, going back, if you know where to look, there is literally art events every single day of the week like i'm not making this up you know so like i said just going um no we're looking also um as far well actually there was a act there was a yeah sure so there was a um axarad market that i was supposed to do today so if you're familiar with axarad it is off of alabama um right there it looks like someone's house but (laughs) they have a pretty nice patio and actually i did a, a market there last night and there was a market there tonight they do them on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, that is through Shop Local Market. So if you like go on IG and go through Shop Local Markets, it'll come up, and then you can sign up for their upcoming markets. There is um, State of Mind Markets off of North Durham. You can, on, all this stuff is on IG. That that's the, that's how I find stuff. So there's State of Mind Markets. There's um, Houston Heights Markets. There's um, there's the um, yeah the Vintage Street Fest. There is like all types of stuff. And that's like I said, those are the things that I consistently do. And there's a, Montrose Markets. That's the one. Yeah, Mont- there's Montrose Markets um, that are very powerful. That's been working out for me a lot. And then there's also type well, now, like I said, if you want to get now getting into the upper echelon stuff, you know, there's Visual Arts Alliance that I work with right now. I'm currently the um, programs manager. So there they, we have two big exhibitions yearly. Now, again, like I said, these are more like, um, you know, up, up, say, tier, up, yeah, 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 tier, yeah. So these How are your wallet? huh? How much your wallet? How much? Your, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. How much your wallet? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, these are these are shows that are going to be juror. The markets are first come first serve. Now this stuff is going to be juror. So you're actually going to have like an actual juror from a museum or a gallery or a curator that's going to be looking at your work. Visual Arts Alliance they do two big exhibitions every year. So if you just go to um, visualartsalliance.org. You look at their upcoming exhibitions, look at their past exhibitions. Like at the end of the day, like people are you're gonna have to do your own research as well. So like I said, there's VAA, there's Hardy and Nan Studios. You check out their website, you look at their upcoming exhibitions. There's Archway Gallery. Um that they they yearly have if you and ours you have 40 pieces, you apply for a solo show. You know, they're they're constantly taking commission. I mean not commissions, but requests for a solo show. So there's, so there's Archway Gallery. There's Mid America Arts Alliance. There's Fresh Arts. Um, all these, and like I said, all these things like that I mentioned, you would just have to you'd have to look them up and then see all the things that they have to offer. There's newsletters. Sign up for um, newsletters. So you, Fresh Arts has newsletters. Uh, we have newsletters at Visual Arts Alliance. 
Um, what's the one? Uh, Oh you man, it's escaping my mind. Huh? It's escaping me you right now. Vintage art is that like Vintage Park or? No, that's Vintage Street Fest. Okay, yeah. yeah so no, what that, does that look? That's, like? that's more of a um a thrift. That's what made me get into clothes because okay. you know we we have a very big like you say like hipster crowd here that loves to thrift and like the vintage mm -hmm. style of clothes. So and like I said, so that's usually in the Montrose area, and they also do them with um Shop Local as well. So like if you're into like the um the, to the retro fit stuff and you know throwback stuff, that's where you would go to get it. And like I said, it's very you know hip hop, very urban. So and it's so not only does it work with my clothes, um, it works with my art artwork as well from like the rappers and entertainers and stuff that I do. Even with um this artwork as well, because you know people are up there coming and trading shoes. I mean for for hundreds of dollars and everyone's wearing Jordans. And so even if you just come in there for clothes. You can still take something from my artwork and relate to it because you know um it's part of my artwork with my opulence there's this bridging the gap between the cultures and then so we're i'm mixing traditional african garments with the sneakers so that's something that's prevalent in my artwork as well that the average sneakerhead may not care about art but can still like something that relate to my piece so again like yeah. that just um like i said some finding your market and then um if and if things I just want to I want to stop you on that real quick. I saw that um that that piece that you're talking about with the Jordans and everything like that and I thought that was like super cool. Yeah. And I can see where someone who may not be interested in art would just love to have that just because of the fact that they had on like their favorite sneakers. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. So then when you have something with the 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 cuz I didn't do it intentionally just to do those markets but if it's just something that where the stars just line up then you know so be it yeah you know, uh -huh. but, um, going back to what i was saying i would say the newsletters are very I, oh my god i wish i can i can think of them off the top of my head because i don't want to i don't want to um say the wrong thing i probably once we post this i'll probably put them in the comments or something but getting on the newsletters is very big as well so pretty much you sign up on you sign up um through email some I might charge you a membership but I mean come on it's like 40 50 bucks a year I mean you can afford we can afford that and pretty much you get all the exhibitions that are going on throughout the country pretty much some of them just have that you can just search through Texas Cali New York all over and it's literally every week there's different exhibitions so in my emails I'm constantly getting exhibitions oh this exhibition, that exhibition, apply for this, apply for that. We have this grant, uh, mural contest here, uh, this over there. Um, uh, stuff for um, hospitals and um, restaurants and all types of stuff. And of course, you find what works for you best. You know, I, um, I did uh, work, I did help with my first mural this year, but like um, earlier this year. But like I said, I'm not really just jumping on the mural stuff like that. Or if it's um, like I said. Knowing, knowing where you, knowing where you, where you want to go is, but determines which um, ones you're going to look at. But there is, like I said, there's plenty of stuff, um, opportunities out there that um, you can get into. Like I said, if if you know where to look, and again, that just comes from you got to like now that we're back open, like you 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 got to get outside, you got to volunteer, <laughs> um, you gotta you gotta join the groups, um, and get in that network. Um, and you and network and, and talk to people, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, and host things and all the time. Yeah, because like I said, had I not did the all that to show, I probably would have, you know, never ran into you. Yeah. So, and and then also some some I would say the last thing is probably I know because like I said, my goal is to get in the galleries and museums and stuff, but that doesn't mean I better to I give a cold shoulder to you know something that may not be at that level. Sometimes you're gonna have to do. You know, sometimes the pop ups and, you know, first come, first serve, first come, first serve type of shows, even though you may not necessarily want to do them forever. And if you don't, then you got to ask yourself, am I doing what's necessary to get to that next level? Yeah. So, you know, also you got to be comfortable um, with, um, with, 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 I want to say not, don't get like not, not saying complacent, but like whatever space that you're in, if you're happy doing whatever it is that you're doing, you know, then by all means, you know, you know, do what floats your boat. Yeah, and I mean, um, 
you never know who you're going to come across. You never know who you're going to meet at any exactly. level. Exactly. And, so and that, too, that too. That too. That too. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you can, I feel like, you know, when you do something that you love, if you go about it with the mindset of you can do it for free or you're freely giving of yourself, there's a book that I read called The Go Giver mm-hmm. instead of the Go Taker, you know, or you can go get her. You know, when you're giving and you're providing value to everybody, you're always going to be able to reach more people regardless. So, um, you could be at, you know, you might meet the person who takes you to the top at the bottom. Yeah, that too, yeah, and that and that happens. That 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 definitely happens, and there's definitely stuff that I can attest to. And then, you know, people that I've that I've met, you know, you know, at the um at the smaller shows, like I said, even even yourself. So, so yeah, definitely. But yeah, but I was definitely um I was just reckoning like definitely people like get out there um volunteering volunteering and getting involved in the community is another very underrated aspect um in the art world. So again, is getting with these nonprofits, whether it's Fresh Arts, Visual Arts, Mid America Arts Alliance, Hardy and Nance, Archway. You like like I said, like you said, give. Don't go in there trying to make it all about you and say, oh, take this stuff down for more work up. No, help out first, <laughs> volunteer, you know, <laughs> you know, um, humble yourself, you know, get in there and volunteer and help out meet people. And then you start getting your name around and then, cause it's just, they're gonna ask you what you do. Like, it's a matter of time. They say, oh, so what do you do for a living? Oh, you're, oh, I do art, oh, you do art. And then what's the next question? Oh, can I see it? Now, that doesn't mean they're gonna put you in the gallery, but you're gonna get on their radar, you know, so definitely you go to these websites. Or maybe they know somebody who would. Or exactly. Exactly. It'll plug you in with someone. So mm-hmm. that next one thing I would say, get on these websites and when they say, hey, we need volunteers, even if it's just volunteers to take tickets at the door or something to just get in there and, and really start volunteering and really start meeting people because at the end of the day, if, people, if they don't know what you do, they I, they can't help you. Nothing really <laughs> if you don't open your mouth. So, you know, I guess, you know, over all this time, what would you say has been your biggest reward being able to, um, you know, go after your dream and, you know, be a creator and an influencer and somebody who's able to change, um, to change the world through art? Mm. I would say, I don't, well, I don't hope not to sound too selfish, but um, just having my 24 hours really has been like the, um, the biggest, like, that's just the biggest reward, just being able to go about my day, how, how I would like to go about my day um, may sound small um, or not that convenient. I mean, it means to others, but you know, just um, being able to have a long, longer than a thirty-minute lunch, like something, just something like that small, like or like I don't like sitting in traffic <laughs> every day. And sometimes I don't like waking up early, you know. And there's times I just don't feel like talking to anyone. Is just. Uh, it's just how it is sometimes, but so the fact that I, I get to I get to do those things, I would say is, is really one of the biggest rewards. Um, also meeting um, different people and just getting to experience different things like that you normally may not um, experience on your own, or even getting to talk to people that you normally wouldn't get to talk to on your own, um, is is the biggest. Is the biggest um, one of the biggest things now, now that I'm thinking about it, and just because, like I said, I like I prefer to be in a situation where every every day is different. You know, um, I I don't have to I'm like the word of not being in the same place or cause I don't do the same shows. You know, I, I mix up my shows. I'm, I'm constantly going to different places because there's different people out there, and you get to hear people hear different stories and um, things like that. So. That would be, um, I'd say, one of the um, biggest things. Just, I just, I'm trying to think how I'll put it. But you're, just able, to, you're, you're able to own your time mm-hmm. instead of trade it. Yeah, you, that, you're yeah. able to do what you want. I mean, I just posted um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, something on Facebook. It says, "If you don't build your dream, someone else will hire you to help." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's true. And yeah. you know, it goes directly to, you know, even what I'm trying to work at is is not to be rich it's to be free Mm -hmm. and freedom to me is like you said you know being able to wake up when you feel like or um you know you don't have to you don't have to you do because you want to do 
you know, you do what you're passionate about and you're not having to, um, you know, do something for someone else. And not to say that in a selfish way either, but mm. you're doing what you want to because you're, yeah. you're able to provide the world with, you know, what you value versus yeah. what someone else values. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. that, and that is a huge takeaway that a lot of people probably wish that they had, but it sounds so small to say, I wish I could wake up when I felt like waking up. Most people wait till the weekend. Whereas if you're able to do that every day, you know, that's extremely rewarding. Yeah, yeah. And I'm and just found out I'm a lot, you know, um, at times I'm a lot more um, happier when I'm doing that, you know. So when I do have my 24 hours, you know, traffic doesn't bother me that much, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you cut me off, I don't. I don't really get as, I'm not going to get as irritated, um, opposed to if, like, I'm, I'm constantly um, stressed out, you know, not to talk down like I, on like I said I was working at a restaurant and I love that job I, I wasn't stressed out it was never um oh god I gotta go to work today yep <sighs> it was never that you know what I mean but you know unfortunately you know God said okay you're too comfortable I'm gonna take this away from you you know and it and it and it'd be like it'd be like that sometimes you know but yeah that's that's one of the the biggest that was like God I said one of the biggest things for me yeah I mean, <laughs> That's huge, you know. Um, so, you know, we're getting close to the end of the interview here. So I guess, you know, how can people find your art? Yeah, so like I said, mainly just on, on Instagram. If you're um, on Facebook, I am on um, Facebook at James Earl. And then just 2014. So Facebook at um, James Earl 2014. But um, mostly on IG. And like I said, um, on my Instagram, there is a link to my website as well so like i said i i post frequently you follow follow my stories follow my posts i'll let you know where i'm going to be at every week if i have something major coming up you know that's where you're going to go to um find out about it um very responsive i check my email and messages multiple times a day so if you message me i will <laughs> i will respond i'm not hollywood <laughs> <laughs> well i mean so, no no pun intended <laughs> yeah i was like that's funny <laughs> but um no, I mean, so, and then, you know, also he's now officially a member of the group as well. So um, he, I'm sure he's in many other groups, but if you're a member of this group or if you're watching out there on YouTube, um, you can join, you know, at least Hollywood Affiliate Marketing Services and you'll be able to see him post there. You know, you can rewatch this. I mean, if you're watching on YouTube now, you're already seeing it. You can follow his Instagram, look for him on Facebook. You can find out what show he's going to be at. And, um, you know, there's that. So thank you for being a member of the group also. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is this is really fun. Hope I get to do a lot more of these. Yeah. And I, I got one more question for you. Uh, so what advice would you have for another aspiring artist? Ooh. So, bro, it's, um, but one, like I said, to start doing, you got to start doing art. I mean, if that's, if you, if you're, if you're gonna create the first thing, you know you have to create. You gotta create every, every, every day, or at least now, at least or every other day. I would say start creating, and then from there, um, get, um, get your so get, well, get on your social media. Like and these are things that you can do, like from your home. You can, if you have the granted that you have the art supplies already, you know, start creating, start posting it, and then from there, just you gotta get outside. You you really gotta get outside and seeing what's out there. And then, like I said, and then at the same time, while you're doing all this, determining what your goals are, trying to find out uh, where you see yourself at, where you see your artwork at, looking at your artwork and determining what your, what's gonna be your best um, placement. And then doing those things and then just staying consistency. Consistency is gonna be the key. Um, whether you post something and get 100 likes, whether you post something and get maybe five like you're gonna have to he's really gonna have to be consistent um uh and that's really the um the mental um aspect of like if i tell you to go somewhere and sell something and then and you don't sell anything you know it's going to be tough to get back up there the very next day and stand there and do the exact same thing again so um i would say just being mentally um, mentally prepare yourself for the no's and the rejections that that will come. Like it's it's gonna happen, but that would that would be my main advice. Like I said, just 
get your social media up, create every day, get outside, um, and just be very um, tough mentally. And you sh- you'll be, you'll, you should be, you'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, best, best way to uh, get going with anything is to start. <laughs> get anything without it. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, what was it? I want to learn um, in a workshop, they said, uh, Sometimes you're gonna do stuff and it's not gonna work. It may work, it may not work. But what doesn't work, what we what we know for sure, hundred percent of the time, is not gonna work. Is doing nothing. You know, Very true. doing nothing, that's not gonna work. 100%. My uh, life philosophy I've probably been using for the past fifteen years has been: if you don't shoot, you don't score. Yeah. And you know, I'd rather take a shot in the dark backwards <laughs> than uh, not shoot at all. Exactly. You never know. <laughs> you might make it. <laughs> right. And the thing is, if I if I don't take a shot at all, I'm definitely not going to make it. Exactly. Might as well give myself a, you know, like they say, give yourself a shot in the dark. Exactly. And then, you know, hang around and the lights might come on for a second, you know, right. <laughs> you can see where the basket's at. <laughs> and, if, and if you made it, everybody's cheering. Now you just went viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's def- yeah, definitely great advice. Well, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to add or anything you just want to leave everybody with. Um, if not, then, you know, I just want to thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you for being a member of the group. Please continue to post your, your work um, you know, and share that with everybody in the group so that they're able to see. I, I recently went to your Facebook page and I saw, you know, amazing stuff and I just started to decide. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I mean, I just thought it was, you know, really great stuff. So, you know, it just probably be a little bit better if you if it came from you just because um, they yeah, can actually course. see you, you know, and get to know you. So and I'll be able to um, share this because I know you said you're going to like edit it and whatnot. And I'll be able to share yeah. this as well. Yes. Yeah, so this will be forever in the group. You'll always be able to watch this. But I'm also um, upload this to YouTube and. Uh, you'll have your your links, and um, I'll send you yeah. the, even the shorter. Yeah, that was me. I just want to make sure if it, it'll be on there, because then when I share it, because I still, you know, I still want people, you know, people to watch it, but come back to your page and then support you as well. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no problem at all. So, like I said, everybody here, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, a family community. Everybody support each other. So, just you know, like I said, share share your amazing work with the rest of the group. Um, like I said, I was I was fascinated, and that's how you know we ended up you know having this interview now. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, always. So thanks a lot, and uh, like I said, we're gonna stay on after this to get our yeah, know, to get the this, uh, yeah get the thumbnail and everything like that. But yeah, uh, to everybody that does end up watching this video, thank you again for supporting Hollywood Affiliate Marketing Services and for um, checking out Hollywood interviews on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Uh, James, if you don't mind, use your right hand and point to the bottom. Right there. Uh, other hand, other hand, my bad. Left hand. Uh, oh, right there. I'm going to put the subscribe button right there. So hit that subscribe button and uh, support. That's how we keep food on the table over here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs>